So today I have the Copley BEL drive with a harmonic drive, dual absolute. So there's two feedback devices on this motor. Uh, one measures the position of the load at the output and the other measures the position of the motor uh, before the gear ratio. This is a hundred to one gear ratio. And we'll take a look at this uh, <clears throat> new motor. And uh, we can see that uh, it's, uh, this one is a lower voltage, uh, slightly higher current FHA motor used with a BEL or BPL drive. And uh, it's got uh, at the output 14 bits of resolution, uh, single turn, 16, 3, 4 counts per rev. And on the motor shaft, there's also a single, I mean, this could be incremental. On the, on the motor shaft, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the, the, the thing is, in this system, because of like this mass spring constant, we don't want to close the position loop on the load. We want to close it at the motor, but we just want to get the passive absolute position from the load to home the motor so we can move from there. So this is about homing automatically with the passive load encoder. And uh, we can see again, the specification for this uh, BIS C, 14 bits on the motor and on the load, 24 volt motor. In this case, there's a manual for this FHA. There's the gear ratio. That's important in this training. And uh, of course you get some motor wires. Here's the BIS C, it's a shield. It's got a black and a red for power, yellow, brown for clock and green black for data so this is like clock and data like a ssi but it's really just uh, incremental and this one does not have a battery um you, you don't need a battery for a single turn so just to give you some idea of a mass and a spring uh is the classical models for you've got a mass and a spring and it bounces and there's some damping so the oscillation of the mass and the spring will die down. Um, the same thing applies uh, from, from linear uh, also to a rotary system. And so it, if you move this mass and you have a spring here, it'll bounce back and forth. And then of course there's a damping ratio and uh, you, can, you can model how long it'll take to, to, to dampen out the bounce. I mean, it's zero backlash, but there's, you know, something that looks like a dead band in here anyways. Um, but it, it's probably just this mass spring time constant and a little friction. Um, so what we'll do is we'll take a look at a system uh, configuration. Um, I'm just gonna start off by showing uh, the motor uh, in, in, in the image here is at the passive load output zero position. And it, it goes between zero and 16384 actually if you're starting to count at zero, it goes to 1683 and then it, and then it rotates. Um, and then the motor itself has an absolute encoder. And if I power up at this position, um, you know, both are at, at zero. Okay. And plus or minus a little bit, uh, depending on, you know, you get, you get a little, a little, there's, there's the, there's the, I set the wrap in this, but trying to, trying to get both to zero, uh, I think no matter how how slow I move, there's a little bit of not able to to get them both to zero. So you know maybe there's a little offset uh, to get the count to go to actual zero. And so I'm just moving the motor encoder based and then just reading the load. Um, so it, yeah yeah well I mean. Gee, within 10 counts. I mean, that, that's pretty good. So I'm just going to go through and show you the basic setup. Uh, I'll take a quick peek at the picture again here. So, so technically, this, this system's already home because I've rotated it to zero, both is zero. I power up and that's zero. And if I stick my mass on here at zero, you know, I don't need to, I don't need to do any, any homing. Um, I just move with respect to, you know, the zero position 
being here. Now I may wake up in a different position and have to read this position and then apply that to the motor encoder. So that's the passive immediate home that we're talking about. So it's really handy. Uh, so we'll see how to do that in CME. But first, <clears throat> take a quick peek at the configuration. It's a rotary motor. This on the primary, this on the, the load. One goes to the feedback, one goes to the control connector. Check the box for passive. <clears throat> the motor is 14-bit advanced settings. This looks good. Um, the load looks a little different. There's extra bits, so there's some alignment bits. I don't know what that's about yet, but... Uh, you know, setting it to 16.3 to 4 counts per rev. And uh, we're using uh, position mode. And again, the, uh, the load is passive. And uh, in addition to that, I've also set the wraps, right? So you know the load wraps uh, between 0 and 16.384, or at 4 it goes back to 0. And then because the gear ratio is 100 to 1, you know, this is how many counts you'd have on the motor if you started at 0 you know, to get the output to go one rev. So if I set both wraps, then I know where my zero position is. And if I'm not at zero, um, I have to read this to get there. So that's that's the purpose of the homing. It's, a, it's, a, it's to home immediately, understanding the relationship of the gear ratio and where the load is, even though I'm not closing the position loop on the load. So here, I'm, I, you see homing is not referenced. So that's, that's how I know on power up or reset what the encoders are saying. I mean, there's some slight alignment that has to be done for, you know, the factory setting. That's how you do it. You don't do the homing and then you look at what the, what the encoders tell on the drive and you can read the motor and the load. So for the homing, we're going to select a absolute passive load. If I was closing the position loop on the output shaft and you're just using the motor encoder for velocity, I'd use this absolute immediate home, but I don't want to use the absolute encoder on the load. I want to just use it for homing, but I want to close the loop on the motor shaft because of the, the spring constant there. I don't want the load to bounce around. So absolute passive immediate home. I could offset things, you know, from the power up and I enter in the gear ratio. So Motor turns 100 times, load turns 1, and I can initiate the, the homing here. And uh, let's just jog it out of this position to some other position. Let's go positive. Now, suppose I wake up at 4096, like a quarter rev away. And again, uh, this this position is what I need to home. I haven't become referenced yet. And then so for the homing routine, absolute immediate home uh, is, this, is the selection. So I'm going to execute the homing. Home calibration is referenced. I'm going to save that. I'm going to exit, and you can see uh, the zero position is not offset to here, so I have to, to go back to zero and go in the negative direction. Oop. There. So trying to get both of these to equal the same is a little bit challenging. So let's go negative, go a little faster. So I'm just confirming. My zero position is here. There, both are close to zero here. There's the wrap. And I'm going to reset the drive. And uh, they should both wake up in, in the right zero position, because I'm in the zero position. So nothing's really changed. Uh, enable the drive. Let's just jog it a little. Yeah, so both are zero. Now let's let's make a for instance. What if we woke up in in this farther position? Uh, it's it's it within one wrap of the load and it's multiple turns of the, of the motor. Well, we ought to, we ought to wake up at, at this count after a reset. So we give it like the forty ninety six approximate 
there. That's close enough. So reset. Okay, so I, I'm not waking up in the in the in the zero position, and uh, the homing will have been executed immediately passively. Yeah, so there. Uh, you know, that's that's just like cycling the power, and you know, this of course will give you the absolute position at the load once per rev, and it wraps. So good. But the motor would wake up at a single turn at zero to 16.384, and that would not be correct. So you can see that now we are relative to, you know, where the output shaft is. And so just drawing a little picture of that, we got absolute immediate uh, on power up using passive uh, load encoder and closing the loop on the motor to avoid the mass spring constant. So you can see that the output has a single turn, 16384, and the motor has a single turn, 16384. So with 100 to 1 gear ratio, this thing has to turn 100 times that, so 1,638,400 counts for one rev. And we want to do the homing, so we want this number to you know, wake up and, and give us relative to the output shaft. And so uh, uh, you, can, you can do this. Uh, just, just remember, you have to, it includes the gear ratio. And then if you had some offset for for the, the homing, you could, you could add that into the, the homing routine as an offset parameter. And then set the wrap for the, you know, for the motor and the load to do what you expect to do based on the gear ratio. And uh, easy peasy, just turn the power on and, and homing is done. How, you know, you, you, can't, you can't get easier than that. Um, the other thing I wanna show too is uh, from, from the, the, the feedback, diagram on, on the copy BEL, the clock and data master, the plus and minus slave, plus and minus. So this is how you, you wire to the to the feedback connector. And then on the load, it goes to the X and X naught and S and S naught. So clock on X and X naught and data on the S line for, for data. Now some drives are A and A naught for data and X and X naught for clock. <clears throat> and so this is how you, you would wire these feedbacks first to the primary feedback of the motor and then the secondary feedback um, of the load for any plus drive that can do dual absolute. So not, not the old drive can't do dual absolute, but the plus drives that are single axes, they can all do uh, dual absolute encoders and, and uh, hopefully uh, made it clear. Thanks for watching.